now recognizes the gentlelady from Florida. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, all of us here today have heard the stories of the depths of human depravity from the Hamas attack, resulting in unthinkable brutality, including the mass murder of innocent Jews and civilians on October 7th. Witnessing such barbarity steals part of your humanity, and it demonstrates how hatred can drive humans to do unspeakable things to one another. And nowhere is hatred more evident than on social media. Since the October 7th attack, anti-Semitic and anti-Muslim hate speech has exploded online. In just one month after the attack, the hashtag Hitler was right appeared in over 46,000 posts. But the rhetoric isn't limited to hate speech and death threats. Jewish conspiracy theories and disinformation continually find safe harbor on social media platforms. Even the racist and anti-Semitic great replacement theory was recently amplified on Twitter slash X by none other than its owner, Elon Musk, and the right-wing darling, Tucker Carlson. Terrorists used the platforms to terrorize target populations, and Hamas even used the personal accounts of hostages and victims to live stream their brutality to incite further violence. Mr. Taibbi, yes or no, should social media companies allow rape and murder to be live streamed by terrorists on their platforms in order to create fear and incite violence? I believe that would violate their terms of service, would it so, not? So your answer is no, it, it should not do, they should not be allowed to do that. Live stream rape and murder? No, right. I, think that, I think that would count as speech that would be prohibited under their terms of service. Good, good. You do have absolutist policies, um, but... I least, do not have absolute... Least, I, do, I do not have... Please don't interrupt me. You have absolute... I've asked your question, you answered it. You do have absolutist policies, at least they have some limits, but I think a Homeland Security official... Um, with respect, if, if, if Congresswoman, a, if, all journalists me, operate under my time. limits. If a Homeland Security official echoed your opinion, you would call it censorship, but I'm glad that at least you acknowledge that rape and murder should not be allowed on social media platforms. Ms. Troy, I have the same question. Yes or no, should social media companies take down brutal images of rape and murder live streamed by Hamas or similar groups like ISIS? Uh, I, I agree with uh, Mr. No, Ms. Troy. Oh. Ms. Troy. Ms. Troy. That's, you were looking at me, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I believe they should follow their internal policies and they should absolutely not leave content up like that. And I can tell you as someone who worked on the Christchurch shooting where, the, where that terrorist live streamed the attack, which was hor horrifying, horrific, we did have conversations. We had official meetings with social media as an international community to discuss terrorist use of the internet and this violent rhetoric on there and what it would lead to potential, more potential violence. These conversations were done in conjunction with social media companies, and it was up to them on their policies to make their decision on whether that met the threshold. And that's exactly the point. Can, can you talk about, during your time at the Trump White House, did you experience situations where information shared on social media presented a national security concern? Yes, there were multiple times. I will also reference what happened at the El Paso Walmart shooting, where there was reference to the Great Replacement. That manifesto was posted on social media that social media platform did not cooperate, that did not remove it, and I want to remind people that my aunt was in that Walmart when that shooting happened. And shifting gears, I want to get, ask about actual weaponization of the federal government, not the bogus red herrings that my Republican colleagues want to chase today, as you referenced in your opening statement. In your time on Trump's National Security Council, how were NSC, NSC staffers treated if they pushed back on so-called deep state narratives? Well, a lot of the time they were fired. And what, given what you saw on Trump's fresh threats to literally weaponize the government to attack his critics, what would a potential second term look like? I think that uh, you would see uh, many experts across U.S. government and the Intelligence Committee purged. There is currently a plan, Project 2025, that talks about exactly that. And I think that you would see a lot of the expertise be replaced by loyalists. And as a result of that, you would see a lot of damage to programs across the U.S. government that I want to remind people that all Americans utilize and need. There would be loyalists in charge of disaster relief aid, like I've mentioned, who would be making those decisions. Thank you. So, so making sure that we have social media companies that are able to communicate with the federal government to ensure that we protect people's lives and national security interests is critical. Mr. Chairman, we know social media companies fail to adequately moderate content, and this consistent failure spreads hate and deadly information. Hate online jumps off the screen and results in real-world acts of violence. Instead of focusing on real-world dangers, Republicans pillory public officials and academics who call out the companies who profit from the harm that they help cause. Then somehow they twist it into a narrative where conservatives are the victims, even as Trump revives Nixon's enemies list 
right in front of our eyes. It's time for Republicans to stop gaslighting Americans. And I yield back the balance of my time. Mr. No. Chairman, I have a unanimous consent motion. Gentlemen's recognized. Uh, I'd, I'd ask unanimous consent to introduce a November 21, 2023 letter to Linda Yaccarino, CEO of X, and Elon Musk, owner of X, that uh, was signed by 25 members of Congress expressing grave concern surrounding X's failure to abide by its own policies governing the promotion of misinformation and hateful, violent, and terroristic propaganda videos, okay. and for using that to, uh, those videos for profit. Without objection. Mr. Chairman, I have unanimous consent. Gentlemen, yes. Kentucky's recognized. As unanimous consent to submit for the record uh, an article entitled CTI, CTI L Files Number 1, U.S. and U.K. military contractors created sweeping plan for global censorship in 2018. New documents show by Michael Schellenberger, Alex Gutentag, and Matt Taibbi, November 28, 2023. Yeah, uh, without objection. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Florida for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's just